Hi everyone, this is Shamin, Chief Digital Marketing Officer at Sky Digital Agency. And in today's video, we're going to compare two different email tools. And if you're wondering which email tool should you choose, these are my two favorites. And one of them you probably already know, it's MailChimp. The other probably less heard about is called MailerLite. And there are some key features to understand before you actually hop on to the platform. And whether you're a small business or not, this video is for you if you are considering to start on email marketing. Without further ado, let's dive into the video. So the first thing to consider when you are considering a email marketing uh, platform or a tool is to ask yourself how many email database do you have? So one of the key considerations when picking an email marketing platform is your email database. How big your email database, but there are other considerations to have as well. Imagine if you head over to uh, MailChimp com and their pricing would actually tell you based on your database size similar to all other platforms let's say you are at 500 contacts which they recently updated this to 500 previously it was uh, 2000 1000 and then 2000 if you updated your database say for example you have 5000 email database they will update the pricing accordingly so you need to pay about 74 dollars a month sometimes I would actually look at this before I actually recommend a platform to my client. But there are other key considerations as well. So personally, I really like how some of the things are available within MailChimp. One of the key things that is available in MailChimp is something called surveys. So if you have surveys and you have some other things that are a little bit more unique and you can't really find it on other email marketing platforms, MailChimp might be your go-to platform. But a lot of people actually switch out of MailChimp due to cost. But I do know of a lot of clients who are still on MailChimp, maybe because they have a MailChimp account from many years back and the threshold of the email database is higher than uh, if you create a new MailChimp account today, which the limit is at 500 contacts, but you can send 1,000 email a month, which means that you can reach out to this 500 contacts at least twice. First thing first is pricing. So let's hop over to MailerLite pricing to take a look at how much it really costs on MailerLite. What you need to do is to slide over to 5,000, which is the same as earlier. They are charging in either USD or Euro. Let me change it let me see if i see the currency here here is usd so if you convert it out based on five thousand i think there is still savings because 74 dollars versus uh 29 29 usd even if you double it is about 60 so you still have a 14 dollars uh, savings but of course usd is only times 1.4 if you see that they have some advanced things like some of the features personally you may not need it right now but if you really want everything integrated you jump on the basic plan first and then if you really really want to try the new or the add-ons the advanced features you can actually upgrade it what happens is they are offering this price if you are built annually so if you would like to be built monthly you can switch over to build monthly and you will see that this is $32 about $60 slightly lesser than $60 for a 5,000 email database compared to MailChimp's essential at $74 so I actually have a separate video on how to create a newsletter with MailChimp. If you're interested in that video, head over to our channel or click over in the description where the link will be below once the video is out, which would be one week after this video. The second thing which I think I would actually want to consider if I am a business owner, I'm a marketer, I'm a consultant, so I tell my clients is that if you have been using MailChimp, what is your open rate like? What is an open rate? Many of you may not know, but if you do not use a tool such as MailChimp or MailerLite, you actually send out your emails on Gmail, Outlook. You actually do not know how many people open your emails and how many of them clicked on your emails. Who are these people who open and click? Whether was it even delivered or was there a hard or soft bounce? So one key thing that email tools such as MailerLite and MailChimp gives is that they tell you how the open rate is. And the good thing is the open rate is still very high for MailerLite. We are struggling with the same database on MailChimp. Our open rate is about 20%, sometimes slightly above 20%. What you want to know is tools 
such as MailChimp and MailerLite allow you to do a segmentation, which means that, hey, to this, um, you know, 59% who did not open my emails, can I resend them an email and change the subject title or offer a little bit? Because what I do on a yearly basis is if someone has not opened the last 10 email campaigns that I sent in the last 10 to 12 months, I would actually unsubscribe them. That gives me a better outlook of how my email marketing health and campaign is doing. Because you can have a huge database. I have clients with 20, 30, 40,000 database, but they are struggling with open and click-through rate. Because these people are already marking the email as spam. They have decided not to open your emails. Therefore, they have put your emails as spam or something happened in between their subscription to you and the delivery. They are not getting the emails in their inbox anyway. So it is better to unsubscribe them. And the other thing I do with my clients is this particular email database before actually unsubscribing them, we actually port it over to another platform to try sending an email to see whether it gets into their inbox. Or we try to send a, another email which is a little bit more text-based so that Without images, without any links, there's a higher chance of this email getting into their inbox. So there are many ways to work around it. But think about these two things that I've talked about, your email database size and also how is your open rates and click-through rates like for your email campaigns. Sometimes just switching a particular provider does improve your uh, open rates. And for me, actually, when I switched, initially our open rates was almost 50 to 60%. Of course, over time, it dwindles down. So you need to figure out how to spice things up for your email subscribers. Now, what's the third thing to actually consider? I would say is how they actually develop the software and how easy is it for you to use. I would actually head over to the creation of a campaign. What I did earlier was I actually have created a campaign for uh, the video. And if you like the video, just remember to subscribe to us. The video is going to go up two weeks after this video has been live. When you create a campaign, it should be really easy for you to drag and drop and stack your videos. So the first four here are free. Okay, the first eight are free. So unless it says upgrade to use, which means on the free plan, you will not be able to use. So for me, there's no difference really. What I do is I just pick any of this because what you can do is when you actually insert an image, right? You can actually edit the text. So you can upload the image. When you actually upload the image, you can also link the image accordingly and you can stack your text up. If you see here, this text box, I could move it downwards or I could actually leave it here because let's say I would like a header. So I would like a heading. So I'm going to add a heading. So this is my title and this is my description. Okay, if you don't like it aligned to the left, you can switch it horizontal. So you can actually stack your design. So to a certain extent, it really doesn't matter whether or not you are on a paid plan unless you, there are specific layouts that you really need for your email marketing campaigns. Personally, after MailChimp has sold their company to Intuit, they have actually made a lot of adjustments to their plan. They are scaling downwards towards the free plan that they are creating because they have such a great brand awareness that I think they feel that to onboard users, they are actually looking at those that they can value at features rather than servicing clients on the free plan because it takes quite a lot of resources. For MailerLite, it's a little bit more versatile than MailChimp. So one of my email campaigns that I've recently sent out, I would like to just show you what was created. So because we haven't been emailing our subscribers for some time, so we came up with a campaign to apologize for the silence. We added our banners, we added our workshops and, you know, just let them know, you know, you can have all this like three column kind of uh, uh, design. So it's a little bit more versatile. Personally, I feel it might affect the click-through rates, whether or not you have a versatile, enough, mobile-friendly kind of a layout on your email campaigns. This is one consideration. Another consideration or rather the third consideration to have when choosing an email provider. So it doesn't mean that if there's an email provider today that actually gives you like 2,000 email database for free, that you should go with them. Because personally, I feel that for MailerLite, 1,000 subscribers for free. But what is really interesting is that they allow you to send 12,000 emails per month, meaning that you can reach out to these 1,000 subscribers 12 times a month. Usually what we 
do is we only do a weekly email if you really have something really important to say and we do something called segmentations where we send another email in two to three working days for those who did not open drag and draw editor you can create up to 10 landing pages currently there is a limit previously there wasn't a limit you can create something called sign up forms and pop-ups these two are available on MailChimp as well all right so if you actually head over to MailChimp you can see that the way that they label is a little bit different but personally i think if you have less than 500 email database to start off this is one plan that you can start off i think the way that they have improved the interface and their builders this year is really great i think it's easier to use so much easier to use right now it is a good start for you to create landing pages, forms, to start generating leads and growing your email database. So these are three main considerations I would have, mainly how big my client's database is. Second, I would also consider the email deliverability of the platform. MailChimp and MailerLite are both okay. But for me, because based on my own experience with MailChimp for my particular database, because some of my clients have really good open and click-through rates, I have decided that my uh, database would be receiving emails from MailerLite. Uh, from our agency, which is Sky Digital Agency. For others, we are actually still using uh, MailChimp for others of our clients and even uh, my other business. So the third thing I would consider would be the builders. If the builder actually is very easy to use, it allows you to be very versatile and creative in your email campaign, that helps you because imagine you're sending these emails at least once a month. People are looking at the design and they get bored very easily. So these are three key things I think I would encourage you to think about when you're considering a platform, whether it's MailChimp, MailerLite or maybe even other service providers, email tools out there. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that this video has been helpful and if it has, remember to give it a like, a thumbs up, do share this video with your friends. It will help us to create more videos like this and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.